It's a place where hard drugs are snorted off a table right out in the open and no one seems to notice where fishing lines pass drugs from cell to cell and a correctional officer steps over it. A place where the smell of pot and crack cocaine fills the air, where inmates run the range, brew their own alcohol, and have access to virtually any drug. Once you're in there, you know what I mean? Anything to alter your mind. The Barton Street Jail in Hamilton. It's where eight men died in custody. Louis Unelli, William Atchison, Trevor Burke, Marty Teichelitz, Stephen Neeson, David Gillen, Julian Walton, and Peter McNellis. The deaths are shocking. The details difficult for their families to relive. But they did, during a rare super inquest that lasted six weeks. This is my brother, and he's gone. It was May 2014, around lunchtime, when Marty Teichelitz sat at a table with his cellmate Paul Lutran in the common room, packing and unpacking drugs. I was in cell 11. Looking out, I saw a lot of whitish beige powder, and I also saw crack cocaine on the table as well, in a couple of different packages. In this interview to police, former inmate Sean Coyne said soon after the smell of marijuana, then crack cocaine wafted through the air. These two men were they were really messed up. They were really high. But when they were caught by a correctional officer with these packages of drugs, Lutran hid two in his rectum and Teichelitz flushed the other. Incredibly, they were allowed to stay in the same cell. A security video later shows Marty Teichelitz snorting drugs off a table. How it's possible um, or why they're not getting caught or stopped because it's plain view. But no one noticed because no one is actively watching the security camera feed. By dinner time, the two men were found passed out in their cell. Teichelitz was revived by naloxone and sent to hospital. A doctor saying he should be monitored and brought back if any symptoms return. When he arrived back here at the jail, there should have been a nurse on duty, but he wasn't seen by one. He was taken straight to segregation. He wasn't put on an official head watch where he would have been woken up every hour. And it's not clear what was communicated to jail staff. This grainy video shows the 38-year-old in his segregation cell that night where he was heard snoring loudly and speaking gibberish. It was just before 7 in the morning when a nurse finally checked on him. He sat up and I took his blood pressure, which was very low, but it was still there and his pulse was also low and, and was there. But two hours later, he was blue with a weak pulse. He never regained consciousness. And his family will never understand why there was such a communication breakdown. You see somebody has low blood pressure. You're aware of what happened to them the day before. How do you walk in there for literally minutes, walk out, slam that door, nobody goes to see him for hours and then he's found dead? 49 pills, including opioids, heroin and marijuana, were found on Marty Teichelitz when he died. The inquest giving a rare glimpse behind the razor wire and the metal bars, a look at the disturbing reality inside these walls. Look closely and you can see a white string thrown under one cell door to another, then a hand pointing down at the string, a towel dragging it inside. It's called fishing and it's how inmates pass drugs back and forth. The security footage shows drugs being passed freely around the night before 42-year-old Bill Atchison died of a heroin overdose in September 2012. At one point, a guard seems to deliberately step over the line while doing rounds. Atchison was found lying on the floor of his cell. He overdosed while correctional officers were on strike and shifts were being filled by managers and volunteers who hadn't worked corrections in the Barton jail before. In many of these deaths, the evidence showed blatant drug trafficking and use. All right, Mom. Bye. Okay. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. When 44-year-old Stephen Neeson overdosed in February 2015, the jail was in the middle of a four-day lockdown after a pair of nail clippers went missing. Inmates were locked up, three to a cell meant for two, and they were frustrated. The toilets were backed up, and the cell door hatches were opened to help air out the cells. 
but that also allowed inmates to fish for packages. When Neeson was found dead, these pills were found in his cell. He had overdosed on his own opioids that had been prescribed for him, medication that he had hoarded. I understand why these people are overdosing because I know how it feels to be to be locked in there when you're locked in there and you're confined in there and there's no no outlet and no escape. Former inmates like Cha Cha Jim James, who has been in and out of Barton, say when there's nothing to do, you do drugs to pass the time. There's no gym because there aren't any recreation officers, no programs and almost no fresh air, but plenty of drugs. I consider the place to be a drugstore. If you wanted it, you could get it in there. Fentanyl, powdered methadone, hydromorphone, cocaine, heroin, marijuana. These are just some of the drugs that easily make their way inside Barton. Some inmates are actually mules. This letter found inside the jail talks about an inmate intentionally getting arrested to smuggle drugs inside. Full body x-ray scanners like this were installed at the end of 2016 to try to catch contraband hidden inside body cavities. The Community Safety and Correctional Services Minister insists the body scanner have made a significant difference and impact uh, positively in reducing uh, the contraband. But drugs keep getting in and inmates keep overdosing because the inquest heard that correctional officers don't know what they're looking for. So our staff need to be trained to understand what they're seeing in those images so they can stop those drugs from being brought in. And even when they know someone is hiding drugs, there are limits. Like when Paul Lutran, Marty Teichelitz's cellmate, hid the drugs he was caught with in his rectum. Correctional officers are forbidden from doing body cavity searches, and the only time they can use force is when they're moving someone to segregation. Officers feel that their hands have been tied. And the fight to catch drugs has become more complicated since the deadly fentanyl and car fentanyl have shown up inside the Barton Street Jail.